When you're working in Power BI, the default behavior of the slicer is quite unintuitive. Take a look at the screen that I'm working on. I have two slicers, band and the product slicer, and I have a year, month, and the total sales table. Let's just say that I pick up, let's say, mid-segment products, and I pick up any particular product. Obviously, I'm gonna get the filter data, but you're gonna see that as soon as I pick up the beard oil right here, my band has also gotten filtered. Now, as a naive user, I do not understand that I have to uncheck the beard oil right here in order to take a look at all the other bands of the products that I have. This problem, although can be solved very easily by going to the format and clicking on edit interactions and then turning off the interaction within this particular slicer. Now, when you actually click on, let's say, premium products, you're gonna see all the premium products. And if I, let's just say, click on any particular product, I see the sales for that. But let's just say that for some instance, I go back to the mid-segment right here, I am going to leave that premium head massage oil, which was a premium product selected in the slicer. This is not quite right. Well, what I really, really want is that once I change the slicer right here, everything should actually go back to its default position and I should not have any product selected. How do we reset the sticky slicers is something that we will take a look at in this video. All right, people, let's just take a look at the data model that I'm working with, especially the products table, which is where the two slicers are originating from. So two simple tables, products and the calendar as my dimension tables, linked to the sales table, nothing that complicated. Now, if I hop over to my sales table, you're gonna see that we had two slicers, one on the band and the other one on the name of the product. And since both of these columns are from the same table, both of these columns have the ability to filter one another. So let's just say as per filter context, if I were to maybe click on any particular mid-segment product, all the mid-segment products are selected. And that is the reason why you were able to see all the mid-segment products in the slicer. But if I were to just go ahead and let's just say pick up any particular uh, product, let's say beard oil, click on OK, I do get to see only one band selected. And that was the reason why the slicers were able to filter one another. And that's the reason why our slicers were not quite working intuitively. Before we start to build the solution, it would be worth taking a look at what are we trying to achieve right here? What would an ideal slicer look like? So if you take a look at my screen, I have the, again, the band slicer and all the mid segments products listed right here. At the moment, if I were to pick up any one slicer value right here, and then if I were to pick up any particular product right here, sure enough, I do get the sales for that very product. But if I were to go back to the previous slicer or the category or the band, and if I were to change that from mid segment to low segment, I am going to unselect the bared oil right here, and all the products are listed right here, which are falling under low segment, and my sales is also unfiltered. If I happen to, make, let's say, click any one product right here, Again, if I were to go back to premium, I will lose the selection. The sticky selection is going to get unselected automatically. So I go to premium, everything gets unselected, and I have all the products, and then I can again select the product that I want. This is a more intuitive behavior of the slicer that we are trying to achieve. To be able to build the solution, what we would need is the ability to create a fields parameter. I'm sure you would know of that, but a very specific feature in fields parameter, which is called show column values in the slicer. Before I go ahead and start to set up my data model in a way that it starts to work like this, I would like to demonstrate what do I mean by fields parameter and show column values. So as a test value, I have created a simple table right here, which is where I have column A, column B, and column C. And what I'd like to be able to do is, I'd like to be able to create a slicer that shows the three columns right here. So I'm gonna have three selections, which is going to be column A, column B, and column C. And as soon as I pick up any particular value right here, I am going to get the values of column A, or the values of column B, or the values of column C, depending upon what my selection is going to be. If I'm able to do it, I nearly would have replicated the behavior that I want. So once I have made this particular uh, table right here, I'm gonna start to make a fields parameter on top of this. Now I've already built the fields parameter. I can quickly show you that how did I do that, but I'm not gonna do it again. Please take a look. So uh, in the modeling tab right here, I have new parameter and I'm gonna pick up the fields parameter right here. In the fields parameter, I can give it any name that I wish. And I'm gonna maybe pick up the test table, which has the three columns. I'm gonna feed column A, column B, and column C into this. Uh, give it an appropriate name, add a slicer to this page, which I have already done right here. 
and I'm gonna click on create. I'm not gonna do that, I've done that already. I'm gonna click on cancel and I have a slicer built right here. Now, once I have already built the slicer, you're gonna see that this slicer, test slicer table is, is the table that has been created, which is nothing but the fields parameter table. I'm gonna copy this slicer once again, control C and control V. This time I am, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna maybe go to the panel of the data right here. Now, instead of showing me the three columns right here, A, B, and C, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna maybe right click on the test slicer, which is the same column, and I'm gonna say that, hey, why don't you show me the values of the selected field? That means whatever values were there in A, B, C, I'm gonna to start to see those values. Now, if you notice that I am now seeing column C and all the three values in column C right here. In column B, all the values of column B, and column A, all the values of column A. If I do happen to click on, let's say, A2 value, and if I happen to go back to the previous slicer and I happen to click on that, I am going to lose that sticky selection and I'm gonna reset the slicer to show me all the values of column number B, because technically what this is doing is this is switching the column, not really filtering the table. This is exactly what we need to do with our data as well. I'm gonna maybe make a visual picture right here so that you understand as to what exactly are we about to do. So. Let's say the first slicer is going to be our band slicer. So I can maybe just go ahead and start to write something like a band. So this is going to be, let's say a band slicer. In the band slicer, we'll have all the three values. So let's just say value A, let's say the free products, the give away products, and there was a mid segment and there was a premium product. So we will have all the products mentioned right here. And then we, once we have these four columns of the table, just as the way that we have columns right here, column A, column B, column C, column D, once we have these four columns, uh, the free giveaway made and um, the premium products, we will list down all the products right here. And these listing of the products are then going to be forming uh, this particular slicer, which is nothing but show the values of the column. So we need to set this table right, and let's just take a look at how do we set these tables dynamically using Power Query, construct the data model in a very intelligent way, and then come back and solve the problem. All right, I'm in my favorite place, which is Power Query, and let's just start to create a helper table that is gonna allow us to create that slicer. At the moment, I'm looking at the products table right here, and I need to create a table something like this. It should have four column headers. The four columns should be giveaways, low segment, mid segment, and premium. These are going to be my four columns right here. Underneath every single column, I need to pull in all of these values once and then twice and then third time and then the fourth time. If I'm able to create a table like this, my slicer should start to work. Let's just see how. So to be able to do that, I've already created a helper query right here, which is my helper. And at the moment in the first step, I have just referenced it to the products table. That's all that I have done. Now, as a first step, what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and reference my band column of this particular table. So table name, column name is going to give me a list. This is uh, having the duplicates. I'm gonna use the list.distinct list function to get rid of the duplicates. I'm kind of good to go. At the moment, what this gives me is nothing but a list, which are nothing but my four columns of the table. Underneath these four columns, I should have all of these values repeated again and again. So I'm gonna maybe create a new step right here and I'm gonna maybe reference the, uh, let's say the products table once again, so products, and I'm this time I'm gonna reference the column which contains the names of the product, which is nothing but this. Now at the moment there are no duplicates, I know of that, but if you have duplicates in this, you can again reference this, uh, like wrap this around the list.distinct function. Now, what I need is, I need four such lists, right? So what I can do is I can convert this into a list. At the moment this is a list, but I can have a nested list so you can see that I have the outer curly brackets and within which this particular list, this is going to give me a nested list structure. Once I kind of commit to this, that is nothing but my first list. And this is the list that I need to repeat it. How many times? Four times. Now, I'm gonna use a simple function called list.repeat. And this actually asks me, hey, what's the list that you would like to repeat? I would like to repeat this particular list. How many number of times? I would like to repeat it four times. Close the bracket, press enter. And that list gets repeated four times right here. Now this four at the moment cannot be manual. It has to be dynamic. So I can reference it to the count of the number of items in the source, which is nothing but my giveaways, low end, mid segment, and premium values. So I can see something like list dot count and I can just reference my source step, close the bracket, press enter, nothing changes, this is nothing but my list. 
Now, from this list right here, I want to create the first column, second column, third column, and the fourth column. How do I do that? I create a new step, and I can say something like table dot from columns. Now, table dot from columns is a function that can take a list, like multiple lists, and from those lists, it can create columns of a table. So I'm saying that, hey, here are four columns, please make a table. As soon as I close the bracket and press enter, I do get four columns of the table. Unfortunately, the problem at the moment is that the headers are not quite right. This needs to be low, mid, premium or whatever. So now I can just feed in an input parameter, which is columns and the columns can be a list. And that list, the names of the columns is nothing but this step right here. So I could just say, hey, why don't you just go to the source step and just get the names of the columns. And that is nothing the table that I want. I'm going to load this table into Power BI and take it from there. All right, back in Power BI and my table has been loaded with the four columns that I have. Now it's the time that I create a fields parameter on these four columns. I'm going to go back to the visual. I've already done that. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to go over to the modeling tab again and new parameter and a fields parameter, which is where I can label it something and I can just go ahead and maybe pick up where is that helper table? That's one. That's the one that I created feed all the four columns one by one by one into this uh, fields box right here click on create and that is going to create a table and also place the slicer up on my screen now once i have done that i'm not going to do it again but once i have done that i actually labeled that particular table which is nothing but the fields parameter as nothing but this table right here once this table has been created, what I can do is I can just go ahead and copy the slicer one more time, control C, control V, and I get two slicers. But instead in the second slicer, what I'd like to be able to see is nothing but the values of the slicer, which are nothing but the names of the products. So I'm gonna open up the data tab. I'm gonna right click right here and I'm gonna say, hey, why don't you show me the selected values of the fields? And that is gonna list down all the products right here. And that is gonna be, let's say, whatever product that I'm kind of working with. At the moment, what we need to understand is that once you click on any particular product, how are the filters working and how is this working at the back? All right, I'm back at my data model and this is where the magic is happening under the hood. Please take a look. So this is the helper table that we created in Power Query. This is the bands table that we have created using a fields parameter. And until and unless I establish relationships between the two tables, I'm not gonna be able to filter my sales data. Let's just take a look at what kind of relationships can be built. So if you take a look at the products table, for me to be able to pick up any band, so let's just say low segment, low products, mid segment, premium, or whatever band of products, I need that filter to be able to pick, be picked up from this table and slice my products table, and then my products table can then slice my sales table as well. So what I need to do is I need to build a relationship with this bands and the band of the product right here. The only problem is that at the moment you would not be able to build the relationship because the primary column right here cannot be linked. So what I have done is if you take a look at the bands table, which is nothing but my fields parameter table, where are you right here? If you take a look at the fields parameter table that I have taken, I have just referenced this column once again right here for the sole reason of creating a relationship between the two tables because I cannot have a relationship between the primary field and any other table. So if I just go and take a look right here, I am building a relationship between this column, which is the relationship column that I have created and this band right here. This will allow the first filter to pass in from this table and filter the products and the products can then propagate the filter to any other dimension like fact tables which are connected. That's filter number one. Filter number two. Now at the moment, if you take a look at the names of the products, those could be unique products or duplicated products, doesn't matter. Now at the moment, what I have done is taken any column, giveaway, low segment, mid segment, premium, whatever the, those columns are, take any column and link that with the name of the product right here. And that is nothing but my relationship. But if you take a look at the behavior of the relationship, it is a two way relationship. So this table can come in and filter this way, which is uh, coming downwards. And this table can also go up and filter this way, which is going to allow us to get the results in the right way. Now, Let's just take a look at the visual once again and then come back to the modeling to understand that how are the filters working in sync. 
Now, if I just go back right here, and if I would just, let's just say, change the mid-segment filter right here, I am seeing that all the, all the products are shown within the mid-segment filter right here. How is that happening? Even though all the four columns contain all the products, no matter what the band of the product is. How is that filtering happening? Let's just take a look. So what happens is that once you actually go ahead and pick up any band from this, from this band relationships, this is going to come and filter this particular table, which is the bands table. Let's just do that actually. So I'm just going to go over to the products table right here. In the products table, I am saying, let's just say that clear all the filters. And I'm going to say that, hey, let's just say that the user selects mid-segment products right here in the slicer, which is going to come and affect this particular column because that's how the relationship is built. I'm going to click on OK and I land up with all the mid-segment products. Now, from the products table, if you think about it, the relationship is two-way. That means all of these products that are there now have the ability, all of these products which are under mid-segment, now have the ability to go up in the reverse way and filter this column, whichever column that has been linked, and only get to the selected products. And that's how this filter is working. And I can just go back and take a look at premium or low end or giveaways and things like that. Whatever the title is, is just reflected right here, but the products are actually of that particular band. And once you actually select any particular product right here, it shows you the data of that. But if you actually go back and maybe pick up premium products, the slicer leaves the selection, is non-sticky, and you get back your default slicer once again. This is pretty damn awesome. Before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out to Matt Allington and Owen who wrote a brilliant article on Matt's site explaining the entire technique. And I actually learned this technique from Owen and Matt on their blog. I'm going to leave a link to the blog and you should definitely take a look at that original article as well. In the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX, my Power Query and the M language courses in case you're struggling to build solid foundation and then carry that foundation to be able to solve your own difficult data problems of Power BI, be it data cleaning, modeling or writing good DAX. I would highly recommend that you please take a look at my courses. Hundreds of students, in fact, thousands of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. I'll be looking forward to seeing you inside the course. Thanks so much for watching this. and I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Bye now.